Shalom, this is Quay. We are going to be looking at Revelation chapter 10 today. We uh, went a little bit into it in our final sessions of chapter 9 because really the two chapters flow together. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. Your word is living, it's active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Father, we thank you that uh, the word of this revelation, even to read it and study it, has a blessing that attends it, and we thank you for that blessing to flow into us today. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I am going to uh, read uh, the, the first uh, four verses of this chapter. Then I saw another powerful angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head. His face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire. He had in his hand a little scroll that was open. He set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and he cried out with a loud voice, just as a lion roars. When he cried out, the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders had spoken, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up what the seven thunders have said. Do not write it down. So we will stop for uh, there. And uh, in our last session, we talked uh, about this particular angel. So we won't go into a lot of detail about it. Uh, today, but um, this angel is obviously identified as a very powerful angel. Uh, he uh, is exhibiting and manifesting the attributes of the Lord in, in a, very, um, a, a very profound way, a very unmistakable way. This is not the Lord, but it is an angel who is uh, exhibiting who the Lord is. Uh, he's wrapped in a cloud. Uh, we, we are told when, the, uh, when Jesus ascended with the disciples in his presence from the Mount of Olives, they were told that the same way that Jesus uh, left, he would return with the cloud. So this angel is coming with a cloud, which is a, a prophetic declaration that uh, soon it will be another who is coming with uh, the clouds. And he had the rainbow over his head. We know there is a rainbow in the throne room from our study of chapters four and five. We uh, of course also know that the rainbow is a sign of God keeping his covenant promises. It was given um, in relationship to never flooding the entire earth again, but it also represents the fact that God is a covenant-keeping God, whichever covenant that it is. Uh, his face was, was like the sun, and we read that in chapter 1 of Revelation, when John saw Jesus fell at his feet as dead. Uh, his face was shining uh, like the sun, and then his feet were like pillars of fire, and this also is uh, a picture of the Lord, his feet like burnished bronze. It is speaking of the, um, the authority, the right, uh, and the action of, of Jesus to bring righteous judgment. Bronze uh, and, and the fire here represents that, probably among other things. And so uh, he had a little scroll in uh, his hand. It was open. So whatever's written in the scroll is, it's, it's open. Uh, in a, later in the chapter, it is given to John and uh, he's told to prophesy from it. But um, it, uh, and it's, he sets his right foot on the sea, his, his left foot on the land. In context, uh, this is the Mediterranean Sea 
and the land of Israel. This is, of course, the uh, hotspot area to which Jesus will return and which hosts, um, uh, you know, the, the primary uh, bullseye things of the, of the end times, although it, it affects the entire globe. And so it says he cries out with a loud voice. Uh, his voice is reminiscent of a lion roaring. And so, uh, again, we have to uh, think and um, pretty much realize that this voice is going to be heard all over the globe whenever this happens. It, it, it won't be a localized thing, and it will affect every, um, you know, as it reverberates through the atmosphere and reverberates into the people, into the ground. Uh, it doesn't say what this angel says, if he actually says anything in particular. Evidently, it's not uh, important for us to know, but just the, uh, the fact that it, it's, it's, it's a roar. We do know that lions have very specific roars. They, they do not just roar um, uh, w without purpose. Different, they, they have specific roars and the other lions know what it means. So we can uh, assume that uh, as with everything, it's not random. It's not a random roar, but um, anyways, uh, we're, we're not, uh, no words are associated with it. But when he cried out, the seven thunders spoke. Now, uh, this is very, this is a very interesting passage uh, because uh, it's definitely the seven thunders. It's, again, it's not a random seven thunders. And uh, are these thunders a particular entities, angelic entities? Are they um, specific, um, uh, um, are, are, are they specific tones in the voice of the Lord? Um, we're not really told, but uh, it's definitely the seven thunders. And they actually spoke. And it says, when the seven thunders had spoken, I was about to write. So, of course, this is John. And he says, I was about to write. So he understood what these seven thunders spoke. They actually spoke in uh, a form that it was uh, understandable to John. And he was going to write. But a voice from heaven, we're not told who, uh, just a voice from heaven said, seal up what the seven thunders have said, do not write it down. And so John, of course, is obedient. Uh, it's not recorded. This is the only thing in the book of Revelation that uh, was and still is sealed. Now, as you can imagine, there's a lot of speculation that you know has been going on over the years and Bible scholars and uh, some are, are uh, content to leave it alone. Some uh, delve into speculations and, and uh, come up with a lot of things of what these seven thunders spoke. Uh, I, I have a respect for uh, the Lord. He said to seal it up. And so uh, I'm not interested in trying to speculate on what these seven thunders said. However, uh, I do also believe that we are definitely told that these thunders speak. It's um, important to God that we have the information that they spoke because John could have just as easily been told, don't even tell the people that you heard the seven thunders speak, but he wasn't told that. He did tell us that he heard them speak. And so uh, there, God uh, has a message for us. It's just not that we need to try to figure out exactly what they said. What I would like to do is I would like to spend 
uh, the rest of this session, and I'm sure we'll, we'll need to go into uh, at least one more session. But I want to investigate the scriptures uh, with the uh, various places where thunder, and especially God's voice being associated with thunder, and uh, the different uh, circumstances and things that happened there because I do believe again that um, uh, God does not want us to be completely unaware or taken aback now of course John was uh, seeing all this from a uh, perspective of, of what would come in the future there is no time in God he's eternal so John was able uh, to see this in real time, and yet it hasn't come into real time yet. That's, that's the amazing thing about God and about eternity. It's one of the things with um, prophets and prophetic words. It can seem like something is so imminent when, when it's revealed in the spirit because you're just right there. It's here. It's now. And yet... Um, it actually is not going to manifest into the, the time spectrum on the earth until a later time. <laughs> so, uh, will there come a time when the seven thunders are heard on the earth in between the sixth and the seventh trumpet? Because that is the time space that we are in now. Uh, the sixth angel had trumpeted. We um, found out what, what happened there. That was when the four angels were released uh, that had been bound at the Euphrates and a variety of things happened. And then John sees this powerful angel who roars like a lion. And now the seven thunders speak. So the sixth trumpet has, has been and done, but the seventh trumpet has not come yet. So we are in that in that space between there and so um, let us let us press into the Lord to um, not try to figure out what these seven thunders said that John was not permitted to write but just what is it about uh, the voice of God that is like thunder what kind of attributes do we uh, explore when we look in the scriptures for thunders uh, what you know what how is God wanting to prepare us in the sense of knowing uh, him better more intimately and so that is actually what we are going to be looking into uh, we're going to go ahead and close this session and then uh, with our next one we will get right into exploring the scriptures uh, with, uh, you know, the voice of the seven thunders. So uh, God bless you as you press in, hear the voice of the Lord in your life. Amen.